everybody, uh, my name is Morgan and I'm creating this series of vlogs in order to shine light and create more visibility on mental health. I have a couple resources that I'm drawing off of. Primarily my own mom, who's a licensed marriage and family therapist. Her name's Ruth Lester. Her practice is in Lake Arrowhead. My other source is Wendy Martina. She's a professor at University of California, Santa Cruz, and teaches psychology and sociology. So with the help of both of these fantastic women, I put together some research to create more visibility, as mentioned before. So I guess let's get into it. Myth. People with depression are always sad. This is not even remotely true. Sometimes depression can mean as much as not being able to get yourself to take a shower, not getting yourself able to eat something, going into your day, going to all your classes, and smiling at everybody you talk to. Not because you actually feel okay, but because that might be your means of coping. Research says one in five people have some sort of mental issue at some point in their life, whether that's depression, anxiety, OCD, PTSD, ADD, ADHD, bipolar, etc. You are not crazy if you are going through this. There is not something wrong with you. You are a human. So I want to talk about the film Requiem for a Dream. In this film we see a couple and their friend going through drug addiction, drug dealing, trying to see what they can do in order to always get their next fix. But there's also the main character's mother. She goes into her doctor for diet pills. So every time that she's supposed to have a meal, she takes this pill instead. Purple in the morning, blue in the afternoon, orange in the evening, and green at night. Essentially like what that, these are, one, two, three, are three uppers to suppress the appetite and a downer at night in order to subdue her to sleep. And what's happening here is a dependency on these drugs. So instead of taking them every time she has a meal, she's taking them every time she's starting to come down from these uppers. By the end of the film, she's doubling, tripling, quadrupling her dosages just to suppress her appetite and to make herself feel more sane. Her doctor's visits are incredibly short, the doctor doesn't listen to a lot of what she has to say, and prescribes her more and more pills as she progresses in her medication taking. The physicians are taking a shorter amount of time with their patients in order to have more patients. So instead of sitting down with one client for an hour and really fleshing out what's going on with them, what kinds of therapy, what kinds of meds, if needed, are gonna help this person, they sit down and they say, oh, you have depression, let me prescribe you this. Oh, you have anxiety, let me prescribe you this. Oh, are these medications working? Great, I'll re-prescribe it. Oh, you're getting a higher tolerance, let me up your dosage. I had been on some form of antidepressant for four or five years, and every time I would go into the psychiatrist, she would ask me how I'm feeling, how the meds are treating me, and would send me on my way. The person that I'm entrusting my safety and my health with didn't actually seem to care about how I was doing. So when I asked my mom about this, she explained to me that physicians and psychiatrists will generally prescribe the quote-unquote tried and true for anxiety, such as Xanax, Valium, Ativan, Clonopin, and the tried and true for depression, which would be Prozac, Lexapro, Zoloft, Wolbutin, all of these medications can be extremely wonderfully helpful and can truly make a difference in someone's life. At the same time, we can't treat everyone as if their body chemical is the same. There is no cookie cutter prescription for one of these issues or issues. What else I think is important to call attention to is that physicians and psychiatrists aren't taking the time to figure out how to solve whatever issue, so to say, that their patient is going through with minimal amount of medications. So there might be a patient that comes in and says, I have depression and I have anxiety. And instead of prescribing that client something like Lexapro, which is used to treat both, the physician would prescribe that person Xanax for anxiety and Zoloft for depression. So now this person is taking 
a ton of medications that they don't need to, when in reality they could have just tried to take one to see if that one individual drug would work. So why are they doing this? Doctors are now prescribing a medication and then diagnosing after the prescription instead of diagnosing and then prescribing. So instead of being A to B, we're now going C to A. Forms of medications that are used for anti-anxiety are called benzodiamapines, also known as benzos, which are known to be more addictive than nicotine. There's a huge risk factor of taking these kinds of medications. Benzos are meant for short-term use, and long-term use can lead to dependence and tolerance requiring even higher dosages. Medications are so short-term. If someone goes off the medication, if it's suddenly just stopped, the symptoms will reoccur to a larger extent than they were existent before. So while drug treatment can be beneficial, it's by no means the only answer. So, I hope that this series has been informative and helpful. If there are any questions, if there are any other topics you want me to research and cover, please just drop me a message, drop me a comment. I'd be more than happy to continue this vlog series. Um, if you want to go back and watch these episodes again, I do cover topics including psychiatric care, psychiatric evaluation, risks of different forms of medications, the issues that people are facing and the struggles that people are facing in regards to their health has nothing to do with something being wrong with them and everything to do with overall systemic flaws. Our system for mental health care was created to help us, but really helps itself before us.